Hello, 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 hello. All the way from the country of Nigeria. I am Prophetess Vicky Alton, and this is <laughs> Prophetess Vicky Alton, also known as Prophetess Vicky Otarina. And this is my beautiful husband here, Prophet Solomon James Otarina, who is from the country of Nigeria. And we are just here today sharing with you guys, just logging on and logging in because I haven't done a live on my personal page in so long. So, Prophet Solomon, what do you have to say to everyone? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, my name is Prophet Solomon, as my wife has rightly say um this is our first this is our first video after our marriage and we're going to be sharing some things with you that i believe is going to help you obey and follow what god wants you to do like they used to say ladies first but um, this is going to be like a pre-interview to our upcoming magazine, Love Across Border. Love Across Border. So we're going to share a little story. Or let me say, we want to share a little about the things we experienced from the very first day I proposed to her, how we met, and, you know, the... The challenges we've been through and, you know, what people say, the discouragement and also God's faithfulness and his confirmation of prophecy and how the journey begins. So we just want to give you a test of what love across borders is going to be. Okay, so I want to give this room to my wife. We're going to be sharing together and I just want you to understand that you're going to be blessed at the end of this video. Amen. Mm -hmm. So babe, <coughs> do you care to just share? You no, know, little. You know, we're giving them a test. So I wouldn't want us to give them food. Just a little of, a little of. Yeah, hmm? why not? Um, basically, well, we met. We met online, <laughs> as most of you guys know. But the 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 most important part of the story is that sometimes God causes you to meet in the most unconventional or non-traditional ways or what is not um usual to some and it is it is it is often god allows people to collide paths whether it's on online whether it's in person whether it's just passing on an airplane whether it's just you know a, 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 an incorrect email went to the to, to the to the right person or, or the, the wrong person but at the right time god causes you to meet that person not not for you not of course for you, for you to have a, a lovely relationship with that person but at, in the end it's all about his glory and all about the plan and the and, and, and the, the play now or the establishment of that covenant that God has for you and that person to, to play out in the, in the earth. So sometimes it may not be the usual way and, and it happens like that even with getting jobs, even with getting contracts. It doesn't always come the usual way that the world expects it to come. But God is able through his, through his divine revelation or through his divine intervention to cause you to be divinely connected with people who will be who together with them you will you will change the world and you will establish his covenant through that whether it's a relationship or whether it's a partnership whether it's personal whether it's relationship whether it's business okay let me come in from here you know a lot of people feel that you especially from africa i'm a typical nigerian man yes proudly a nigerian man and I don't care what people display regarding Nigeria and everything. But what I want you guys to understand is that I want to use Nigeria and I as a person, as a part of, as an example. 
Whatever the devil fights carries a very great significance mm -hmm. and a very great message to the world. Mm -hmm. So I used to tell people that um, there can never be a counterfeit without an original. So when I see how the blacklist Nigeria, believe me, don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying there are not wrong people there. It's just that people have termed Nigeria to be, oh, the bad country, the fraudulent country, the corrupt country, stuff like that, nothing good can ever come out of it. And they forgot that the same word was described of Jesus. When they heard that he came from Nazareth, they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, this is what I want you to understand. Whenever you see the devil fighting a talent of yours or anything you're doing, seriously, God's hand is in it. There are three things I used to tell people as a minister. Whenever God speaks to you or you have a feelings about something, one thing you should ask yourself, is God involved in it? If God is involved in it, no matter the battle, no matter the trials, the temptation or the fight, relax your mind. So sometimes if God is involved in it and the timing is not yet right, you will face challenges. Now, whatever we are sharing with you right now, people of God, believe me, is our life experience. We've been together for two years and over two years and almost six months before we finally got wedded last Saturday to the glory of God. But I want to tell you something. Number one, I came from a different place. She comes from a different place. Different countries, millions of miles away. Different mentality, different understanding. But do you know it was very difficult maintaining contact because of our time difference, the gap is too much. And sometimes when I want to rest, that's the time she'll be awake. And sometimes when she's walking or going to bed, that is the time I'll be done with my work. But that was not the challenge. We had, I personally, she probably might want to share her own aside, but I had a lot of discouragement when I took her picture to some of the people I respect as my spiritual parents, spiritual, you know, spiritual guides. Mm -hmm. The first reaction would have knocked me off. But from my childhood, I remember when you asked me, who do you want to marry or where do you want to marry? Two things. Who are you? I will strictly tell you I'm a prophet sent to the world and the next thing i will tell you is that i am called to marry a foreigner i'm called to marry a foreigner so now when people began bombarding me with things uh, oh uh, the place you want to marry they will leave you they will run away with your children they will leave you know a lot of things okay okay guys just imagine you walk into your parents or your spiritual parents, somebody you respect so much, and you tell the person, this is who I want to marry, and then their reactions to you is that, no, that is not God's will. My God, sometimes, listen to me, this is not rebelliousness. It's good to obey the voice of your spiritual parents. Very, very, I hold that strictly. But sometimes, we obey them rather than listening to what God is saying to us. If I've obeyed some of them, I wouldn't have made this gift. If I've obeyed some of them, I would have missed this gift. We quarreled. There are a lot of times we quarreled. We, no, seriously, we broke up. But God in his infinite mercy brought us back in. And there has been one challenge to another. I think a lot of things that I can't share here because of, because of security reasons and some image. I'm trying to protect. But I'm telling you the truth. It has not been easy. And I see a lot of people saying, oh, we need a wife. You know, Solomon, get us a wife. And I'll just laugh. I told them, you don't understand the price we've paid. But this is what I want to tell you. You're listening to me. When God plays in your heart, where he has placed your second half, and you are convinced that this is my second half. Yes, before you get married, the person is your second half. When you become married, you become one. 
The Bible says the two shall become one. Amen. When you are convinced that this is where God is leading me to, stand strictly to God's word. Don't look at the right, don't look at the left. It doesn't matter where the person is coming from. God knows from the foundation of the earth why he made your wife or your husband from the place that person is. And do you know what? From the experience we've been together, I have come to discover, I've come to learn by experience that the best gifts that God gives to us, they are disguised. And sometimes they come in packages that you don't understand. So you have to take your time and unveil them to really know that this is where God is coming from. I tell you the truth, heaven knows my heart. I never regretted one day of meeting Vicky. Uh -uh. I never regretted. And I am so glad that God gave me the strength to hold on. We had some programs in our church where I worshiped worship before our, our wedding. They have been confirmations. And one of the things God said was that you made the right choice. That is just what I want to hear from God. I don't care what people rated me or what people are still rating me. <laughs> but what I care about was what God said concerning me. And I'm so glad that she left Barbados to come to Nigeria. And I know that a lot of you, as I'm talking to you right now, uh -huh. God is speaking to my heart, <laughs> a lot of you, that you would have made decisions, not only in marriage. Believe me, what we're talking about is not limited to marriage alone. There are a lot of decisions that you are calculating based on your own mindset. And you are missing a lot of things that God has in store for you. The Bible says God's promises are yea and amen. Until your will aligns with God's will, you'll be rotating, you'll be going in circles. Mm -hmm. You'll be going in circles. So, love across border is about encouraging one another. I dare you to love across your border. Go wherever God place your heart to, wherever God is placing your love, go, don't mind nobody. The only way I will ask you to pause, if you're not sure, and if you're having some doubts in your heart, go. I tell you the truth, when you meet your missing rib, the right person for you. You will know, nobody will tell you. There is this conviction that the flesh cannot explain. It doesn't matter who God uses. You see, everybody needs a connector. That is true. But you don't have to do the connection yourself. Not necessary, though. But once your heart is set and you're ready, God brings the right channels. And I'm glad to say online to everybody that God uses Apostle Margaret with the hands to connect us. Amen. Yes, I'm Amen. proud to say that. Amen. <laughs> so and till tomorrow, we're still grateful for her, for allowing her Amen. to be used by God. <laughs> let me, Hallelujah. So let, me, let me enter Jay here. Go ahead, please. So I, I officially met Solomon through my apostle who did a live with him and I really, really wasn't interested at all. <laughs> but um, she just said to me, you know, message him and tell him how the interview went and so on. And then she said, but he's single. And I said, mm -hmm. well, okay, he's not my cup of tea, but <laughs> in saying that he's, he's not, he, he wasn't my cup of tea then, but he became my- I am her bread, <laughs> burger, everything now. Her bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> but but before that, before I we were before Apostle would have been the one used by God to connect us, I would have seen him online. I saw him online on Instagram. I was just searching for prophets and I said, Well, let me add some people around the world and see what people are doing in their ministries and so on. And I think I put up prophets in Africa. And he was one of the people that came up. This was like Six months before I even knew, well, met him officially. And I refused to add him because I looked at him and I said immediately, this guy is going to like me and I am not <laughs> interested. She delayed our move. 
So I said, this guy is gonna like me, and I I just deleted him from off my page, from off the the search or whatever, and and at that time my eyes was on another type of race, another look of a man, but God would have given me so many different dreams, about which I've never talked about a lot of dreams about. Um, my desire, why my desire was not what he wanted for me, and he showed me exactly why long before I met him. God would have spoken to me about my husband not being from Barbados, not even his first language being English, and his first language is not English. Um, he would have spoken about the kind of person he is, and all of this I received not asking God for a husband, but I received was spending time in the presence of God, and God would just He would just write through me. I would be sitting, and He would just write through periods of fasting. God would just begin to download, write uncontrollably about the person that He assigned to be with me. So He, I have a, a whole book of things that God would have said about. About this man that he he would later unite me with the type of personality the type of heart the type of ministry and every single thing and and and, and I knew God would have God would have said to me that when I meet that person I will know I will I will because everything that he has written will automatically connect in my spirit will connect with that person. So, and it did happen that way. All of what God had written for about three years, I wrote mm -hmm. about three years in this book and all of what God would have said to me automatically, I see in him every single day from the beginning of the time we met up until now i continue to see that and i am really grateful to god and it, as i said it didn't come with me asking god for a man or asking god for a husband i was determined to spend my time with god i was in, i was i was um determined to, to experience what it meant to be the bride of christ to have christ to have god as my husband and i spent so much time alone and day Dating God, for lack of a better word, and while dating God, God spoke to me about the earthly version of a husband that he would assign to my life, not for not for the glory of the world, but for his glory. And God has spoken that specific thing to me many times. It's not for my glory. It's not necessarily for my satisfaction, but for the word of God to be established and for... Ooh, Sorry, and um, for the plans of God. So this is not just a, 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 any old marriage um, for us to come together and just enjoy ourselves. Yes, that's important, of course. But outside of that, there is a covenant that God would have made. And I want to I wanna share with you something that God said to me right before I came here. I, I was, I was, I think I had prayed that it was a four o'clock prayer meeting. Yes, guys, when I come back to Barbados, it's four o'clock, 4 a.m. Every Saturday prayer meeting is still going to be happening. Um, but that four o'clock meeting, when, I, when we finished at five o'clock and I went to sleep, I heard a voice. That voice said to me, you are not thanking God for a marriage. You are thanking God for the fulfillment of the promise. So there is a promise. There is a covenant that God made um for our lives or a relation to our lives that the marriage is really the accomplishment of that promise it's not a wedding that you're thanking god for it's not a wedding that you want it's not all the beautiful things because that will come but what it really is is the is, is the fulfillment of a promise so from that day I started, I stopped thinking about where would the money come from, how will it, how will we get married, blah, blah, blah. And I started to say, thank you, God, for fulfilling the promise. So the voice said, you are not thanking God for a marriage. You are thanking God for the fulfillment of a promise. And I changed my prayer from that day based on the voice that I heard. And that has really changed my life and my view of 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 even when we were um, getting married recently, not having all that you needed and so on. And God just brought things all together. And I would say we had a beautiful, beautiful wedding yeah. right here in Nigeria. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. So okay. Um, some of else. you, please, before I continue, I would love you to share. Share in your groups. Share to people. Let them be blessed. Amen. Share. And... 
Secondly, I, I remember 2007 when I was praying my early morning prayers around 9 a.m. God began to talk to me about so many things about my ministry, my calling, the fulfillment of my calling and my wife. And one of the things that God told me before I even knew that the Caribbean is an island, islands, islands, I, I just love I thought it's just a music, a kind of music, because I love music. In fact, it's one of the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given unto me. I, he, I, he, plays he taught like me in the dream. Five different instruments? Yeah. Three or four? I five. play the keyboard, the drums, the bass guitar, the lead guitar, and I, yeah. I play four. a little, and I play acoustic guitar as well. Wow. So I sing as well, by God's grace. And, you know, I never sit down under anybody to be too taught. The Holy Spirit taught me in a dream when I was very little. I started playing bass guitar when I was 12 years old. That's a story for another thing. Depending on the grace that God has given unto you, He makes available everything you need. He makes them available inside of you. So He develops them as you progress with Him in your work with Him. But that's not where I'm going. Until the day, I think last year or so, that I discovered that Actually, the Caribbean is actually an island. It's, it's islands. Chain of islands. Chain of islands. And that 2007, God spoke to me expressly. I wrote it down. I have a covenant book. And I tell you the truth, guys. Our marriage confirmed everything that God spoke to me. The days, the months, the timing, everything accurately with scriptures. Any day that any of the word in the covenant book is fulfilled, I mark it. I mark it. God told me that Solomon, you and your wife are going to be the connection between the African and the Western world. I knew that God has called me as an international prophet, as an end time igniter of the fire. And I also know that my wife has a very big part to play. But there are some things I requested of God to be the characteristics of my wife, the physical character. And Everything, everything, when I mean everything, everything. And then secondly, when the time came, God created an opportunity to be interviewed by Apostle Maguire. She had been my friend on Facebook for three years, no communication. And I remember that day, she told me that God woke her up and told her, interview Prophet Solomon. Now. That yeah. now is the time. Yeah, that now is the time. And in my Facebook, I never put anything like prophet. It's just Solomon James. Because I don't like titles. But when she, by divine connection, she interviewed me, God told me, be straightforward. Be straightforward. And the day I spoke to her, you know, and I told her I was going to call you, I don't do that. I just said I was going to call you. I didn't call her that day. So the second time I called her and she picked up the phone, I just told her, wow, you are beautiful. And that was all. So I just told her straightly, I said, young lady, I want to marry you. And she told me, okay, okay. When I saw her reaction, I said, okay, let's take a week to pray about it. The day I set up my mind, we couldn't finish three days because it was so strong. Call her, call her, call her. And I called her. Yeah, he told me he was going to call me. He didn't call. Mm. That was the first strike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I want to say is that even in the ministry, in your business, follow your heart. Listen to your heart. When I mean heart, I'm talking about spirit. When you have people that God has used to bless you and connect you, build a relationship with them and maintain the relationship. It is very easy to make friends around relationship, but it's very difficult to maintain. Some way, salvation is free. Like someone in Nigeria used to say, but you have to buy the Bible. So you have to maintain your salvation. Your service is a relationship. I have worked with a lot of people to the glory of God, privileged to work with a lot of people. The problem I notice with our generation these days is that they don't know how to maintain relationship. Relationship is not, a it's not built in a day. You maintain it, you service the altar of relationship. Same way, you have to learn 
to service the altar of your relationship with God. Prayers is not everything. Believe me, people, I'm not exaggerating. I pray, yes. I fast, yes. But I've come to understand that prayers and fasting did not build the relationship I had with Vicky. They not give me the connection. But my relationship with God, worship, that was what gave me that connection. I knew what God requires in the place of worship. And it's not just songs. Worship is not about songs. It's not about playing music. Do you know you can worship God with your time? God loves appointments. And when you tell God, I want to meet with you so, so, so time, he leaves everything and wait for you. So when you respect that time, even if you, sometimes he will just tell me, Solomon, go into your house, lock the door. For one week, he will not allow me to pray. He wouldn't allow me to study. He would just tell me, listen. And I respected that. But it was built over the years. I said before that we're just going to do a short video to give you a taste of Love Across Borders. Now, Love Across Borders is a magazine. It's a special edition of uh, Divine Purpose magazine anchored by my beautiful wife. And Amen. we... We are going to do some interview. We're going to be interview some men and women of God, young people, not only men and women of God, people all over the world who marry outside their countries. You know, in Nigeria, there's a lot of problem with people marrying intertribal. Intertribal marriage is a big issue in Nigeria, let alone me marrying abroad. And I also know what she passed through when she told the people in her country that she was marrying in Nigeria blacklisted country all over the world for all nigerians watching there is a fire on you that you have to take to the world maintain your relationship with god correct your character maintain your integrity we are to do to do the corrections that the world has taken and before we go i i want us to pray together as we are talking, the Spirit of God is ministering to my heart. There are a lot of people who need to correct their relationship, and there are other some who need a fresh relationship. It could be with God. It could be your marital relationship. I know that God does not just permit people to do things coincidentally. I know there is a reason for all this. That was the reason why I requested that you share it. Let young people understand. Now, this is another thing I want to say out to the public. Until the day they permitted us from the church may kiss your bride, I never kissed her on her lips. I never had any sexual intercourse with her. We were tempted, yes. We were but tempted. God helped us to hold ourselves. <laughs> Ministry is not about standing to preach. Ministry is all about transparency. We are flesh and blood. But the grace is always sufficient. So Amen. we made use of the grace. When people say, I pray for the grace, the grace is always sufficient. But the problem is, have you been making use of the grace? So, for young people over there who are into a relationship, and the man is telling you, hey, we have to do it before. No, 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 no. You don't have to buy into it. No. God's gifts are perfect. God's timing is the best. Amen. So we would like to pray with you. And I want her to pour her blessings on you. Listen to me, people. I know she's a prophetess. Yes, I know the giftings she carries. Even her, she's not even diving into the gifting yet. But I respect her prophetic grace. So I would want her to bless you. I would want her to bless you. And I will seal it up in the place of prayers. Amen. So baby, please bless the people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So before I pray, I just want to give God thanks for each and every one of you. God is indeed awesome. He's a blessed God. And, and, and I just want to reiterate what the man of God said in relation to you. You know, sometimes God will connect you across borders for many different reasons. What you must do is be able to hear what you must be able to do is to hear the voice of God 
and know what God is telling you to do. Know what God is saying to you that you must do because your, 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 your revelation and your communication and connection with God and confirmations with, with God is what will carry you to that destiny and to the fulfillment of what God is, is bringing to you. So he, so you running with the plan of God is all about you having such a close relationship that you hear him so well and you you run with it amen, amen. so we're going to pray father in the name of jesus i cover each and every person on this life today i pray lord that your heart will be poured into them god father that they would understand your heart for their lives lord for the for the plans that you have for them oh god father lord we pray today in the name of jesus lord amen. that it would not be for those that are single married whatever whatever situation relationship status they have father it will not be about the relationship but god it will be about your the fulfillment of the promise that you have already laid out for their lives father we declare and decree it shall Amen. be established Amen. as eyes as their eyes are as our eyes are kept on you as our minds are kept on you father those that have been given ideas and visions and 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 revelations of of ministry projects Today, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would divinely connect them across borders, mm -hmm. that they would reach the world with the message, reach the world with the vision that you've given unto them, Lord. Father, that tires, tirelessly they will run with the mantle that you have given unto them. In mm -hmm. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. As she was praying, I, I felt a ministration in my spirit that somebody, God, is, is working on your womb. God is working on your womb. Okay. See, it doesn't matter the report the doctors have given or anything. I feel the anointing for healing right now. So in the name of Jesus, I release the healing power Amen. of the Lord upon you right now. Amen. And for those of you who are looking for the fruit of the womb, I release grace to bear Amen. children. In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. I open doors for you, ministerial doors, relationship doors. I open business doors unto you all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. And Amen. I pray that the hand of the Lord will reach unto you right Amen. now and break every yoke. I feel the Spirit of God breaking out every ancestral yoke all over your lives right now. I curse the hand of the enemy over your life to wither in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord says in the book of Psalm 91 that there shall be no evil before you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Amen. Coronavirus is a plague. Amen. I decree and I declare it will not come in near you. It will not come near your family Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord will guide and protect Amen. you. Amen. I decree and I declare as a prophet of the Lord that you are preserved in the name of Jesus. May the love of the Lord fill your heart. May the joy of the Lord saturate you. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare that your finances are healed. I hear the Lord Hallelujah. say to me that somebody's finances is healed in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody right now listening to me, you are having issues breathing. You're having issues with your lungs. It's not Corona. You're having issues with your lungs right now. The anointing of the Lord. The anointing of the Lord is coming upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive grace. Receive grace. I correct your breathing system right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There's another person. You'll be having issues with your left eyes for, for six months now. The hand of the Lord is upon you for healings. Receive your healings in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive, I receive an anointing. And a, and a commandment to bless you and I decree and declare that you are blessed Amen. you are blessed as you go out you are blessed as you come in Amen. oh I pray your children will never be wayward your children will never be musings but there will be a blessing Amen. to the generation Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ I speak to a specific some person right now your voice you are a music minister and somehow you lost the grace in the place of worship. I decree and I declare that the anointing of the Lord will reverse that grace and move you to your next level in the name of Jesus. I don't care the mistake you've made. Yes, I know what I'm saying. I don't care the mistake you've made, but the hand of the Lord has come upon you. The Lord says I should tell you that he has forgiven you. You have to learn to let go, forgive yourself, and do not let the devil to capitalize on that mistake and bring you back. I decree and I declare that you are being set free in the name of Jesus Christ. 
From this moment, I place the seal of the Lord upon you. I command whatever country that is represented here by you, that the hand of the Lord will reach out to these countries, O oh God, and cause revival in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the government receive the hand of the Lord, the touch Amen. of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will not suffer lack when people are crying. Amen. You will not suffer loose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Father. God. There's somebody watching us right now. You believe God for healings for your parents. Right now, because of your presence here, the hand of the Lord is reaching out to them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You will not die by accident. There shall be no untimely death. Amen. I bless you from my heart. In Jesus' name. And by the grace of God upon Geta Ministries and Mission Inside Out, we decree and pronounce you blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus loves you. Amen. If you are listening to us right now, and you know you've not given your life to Jesus. I just felt in my spirit to do this. I think this is the best time for you to do that. You see, life without Christ is full of crisis. We can say that. We've tested the other side of life. And we've been in Christ. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It's a personal experience. So if you've not given your life to Jesus, I want you to just say these simple prayers with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the gift of life. I open up my heart unto you. I denounce and renounce all my wicked ways. I ask, O oh Lord, you release the gift of your spirit into my spirit. I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for my sins. And I accept him with my heart. This moment, Satan, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the book of life. I am yours forever. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for those ones that just prayed to accept you right now. Stretch up your hands with me. We decree and we declare that they be sealed with the seal of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with the Spirit of the living God right now. Receive grace to live aright. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've just said these prayers and you are not going to church, it's not enough. I want you to Look for a Bible-believing church, praying, fear with the Holy Ghost, and worship with them. They will guide you. Let them know that you just gave your life to Jesus, so they can guide you aright. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much. All of you all over the world viewing, we have a lot of countries here. We want you to know that we are praying for you. We are praying for you. And we'll keep praying for you. We love you. We love you, Apostle Margaret Brady Haynes from the island of Barbados. <laughs> Pastor Sam Kenu from the beautiful country of Nigeria. I can see some of you from the United States here. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. But I love my wife more. <laughs> I don't mind Amen. Him. Don't mind him. All right. <laughs> God that bless you. Asked, do we have a baby yet? Yes, it's coming in. <laughs> yep, it's coming in. It's forming. I've also the baby is forming. Twins. A boy and a girl. Twins. Oh, my father. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. God so bless God you. bless you and see you another time. Perhaps. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing some prayers, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do some prayers. We're really going to... Okay, tomorrow is going to be a prophetic connection. Tomorrow is going to be a prophetic connection. Mm -hmm. We're going to share the word of God a little. We're going to be praying for you. So please, tomorrow is going to be more like an interactive session. So where we share the word of God. 
we're going to pray for you. If you have any prayer points, prayer requests, write it down. So as the course of the program, we're going to be prophesying to you what God permits us to prophesy. There are a lot of things that God has been talking to me when I was ministering to you, but I wasn't permitted to share it yet. So same time, right? What time is it? Oh, Sorry. Okay. You know, the time difference. Five o'clock, which is mm. 12 p.m. No, we AST. have church tomorrow by this time. Church? Yes. Lord. Um, so it would be morning then. Okay. It would have to be... Well, we will just be on at some point, but we will see you then. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's make it 6 a.m. Nigerian time. Right, okay, that makes sense. Which is... But that's one o'clock, most people's time. One o'clock? Mm. Mm, then 12 o'clock Nigerian time would be perfect. Yeah, which is 7 o'clock your time. Okay. And 6 o'clock American and Jamaican time. Okay, so we will be live tomorrow, 12 o'clock Nigerian time. And we will be blessing you. Amen. Write your prayer requests. I will advise you, if you feel like fasting, please do. Come live with expectation. Thank you, Pastor. Come live with expectation. I know that God, I know that God Jesus. is going to reach out to you. I know that God is going to reach out to you. So come with expectation. Write your prayer points down. We're going to pray with you live here. We'll take our time. So we're going to pray with you live here. And we're going to speak the word of God to you. We're going to prophesy into your spirit. And we will push you by the help of the Holy Spirit to your next level. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.